so lads, you've been with us now um, at ISH for five days. You've led dynamic uh, workshops for both students and teachers in that time and also given a, an evening session uh, for our parents. Um, can you tell us about your experiences with the IB? Sure. The, um, I was introduced to the IB probably four or five years ago when uh, Malcolm Nicholson, the head of MYP development, asked me to do some research into the skills of effective learning. So I looked into that and, and wrote some papers which seemed to show that all children could learn skills to improve their learning and that these skills could be taught by teachers. Mm -hmm. So that ended up with me being um, asked to design the curriculum of learning skills for the MYP. And this is the curriculum of ATL, as it's called now, which has been rolled out now in 2014 uh, in the next chapter, mm -hmm. for the MYP. Mm -hmm. And Malcolm has since gone on to become the development director of the diploma program and I've done further work with designing ATL skills needed at the diploma level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, what are some of these skills that you think students uh, help students succeed and be, be more effective learners? Well, it's a, it's a huge range of skills, I guess. I mean, it's got to start with them realizing why they're at school and why they want to succeed and being able to set goals both long-term and short-term goals to enable them to get there they've also got to be good at time management they've got to learn how to manage the time it takes to complete assignments the time it takes to complete projects but also manage their time their study time leading up to exams they've got to understand about motivation about self-motivation about how to get themselves to do things that are hard. They've got to understand about their particular ways of learning. Do they learn in particularly different ways? And what are the most effective strategies for learning that they could use? They've got to learn about um, how to put in place information review and information comparison and verification and validation. And, and They've got to learn how to process information, just simply writing information, summarizing information, making good notes. Um, there's a thousand different skills that all come to play in effective learning. Right. And right. what you discover always is that the best students in any school already have all these skills. Yeah. And other students are disadvantaged by not having the same skills. So if we teach the basic skills to every single student, mm then all students can probably improve their performance. Mm -hmm. So you, what would you say, that, that, well you've talked about some of the benefits of um, these uh, skills being taught e explicitly. Could you expand on that? Sure. The best way to teach the skills of effective learning is to embed them in subjects. Mm -hmm. Takes to have subject teachers while they're teaching their biology or their economics or, or whatever they're teaching to embed the skills necessary to learn that subject well within that subject. Mm. The problem is that there are probably a core group of skills that are applicable to every single student. Mm. And if every teacher is individually embedding the same skills in every lesson, it becomes overkill. And students are getting a lesson on time management in every single class they're going to. So it seems to work best to take a blended approach where you take the basic core skills that I call core generic ATL skills and you teach them explicitly, like have a lesson on time management, a lesson on self-motivation, and then get all teachers to reinforce that same lesson in their subjects. But then to separate out the particular types of skills that someone in a science lesson needs as opposed to someone in an arts lesson or a humanities lesson where the specific skills needed for that discipline are different. So those are the ones that I think that are best taught by subject teachers within their subjects are those subject specific skills and if we can pull the rest out then maybe everyone gets the same basic skills which enable them to do better. Right, right. So, I mean, rightly so in school, we, talk, we, we focus on um, empowering students to uh, succeed. But what do you see as the importance of failure in student experiences? Well, I think, in fact, the 
handling failure is probably the most critical skill in success in schools and also in tertiary education. And it's simply because that if a child doesn't perform as well as they want, let's say a child sets a goal and doesn't achieve that goal, if they just leave that, if they do nothing with it, if they don't learn from that failure experience, then they don't improve their performance. Mm -hmm. So the critical thing is for students to look at any kind of failure, a time where they don't get the grade they want, the outcome they want, the performance they want, but to look at that objectively and think, okay, I didn't achieve what I wanted, that's okay. Failure is part of success. So I've got to look at that failure, I've got to work out what I did wrong, I've got to make some changes, and I've got to have another go. If all students learn to do that, which is what I call failing well, if all students learn how to fail well in every time they didn't achieve their goals, they reprocessed it, they made changes and they had another go, then every child would be in that learning cycle and every child would improve their performance. Mm -hmm. The problem is when someone has a failure and just ignores it or pretends it doesn't happen or blames it on someone else, mm -hmm. then they're not learning from it, they're not getting anywhere, they're going to stay at the same point. Mm -hmm. So to me, failing well is the core of the mm -hmm. entire program. Right, well, I know I, I've already heard back from our students that they've benefited greatly from the two uh, year group sessions we've had, and I wish you could have uh, spoken to all our year groups, but it's been a great experience this week. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been great being here.